Top 10 Things to Do in Krakow Krakow, a UNESCO World Heritage Area, was the seat of the Polish monarchs for half a millennium until the 17th century. The old town was rebuilt after being plundered by the Mongols in the 13th century, and the design has barely changed since then. Krakow was at the zenith of its power during the reign of Casimir III the Great in the 1300s. He established Krakow University, where Copernicus later studied, as well as the Kazmierz district, which was formerly a separate city and home to one of Europe's largest Jewish communities. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll talk about the best things to do in Krakow. Be sure to like and subscribe the channel for more videos like this. So let's get going. Number 10. Schindler's Factory You may be aware that a significant portion of Steven Spielberg's 1993 film Schindler's List was recorded in Krakow, and since 2010, visitors have been able to enter the administration building of the enamelware factory he took over following the 1939 invasion. There is also an amazing Krakow Historical Museum branch. Here you can peruse accounts of Schindler's book cooking that helped him save more than 1,000 Jewish lives, the original desk from Schindler's office, his list and photos of survivors. But there's also a wider exhibition about the occupation of Krakow during the Second World War, where you'll find underground tunnels used by the residents, reconstructions of a dwelling in the ghetto, and basements where Jews would be hidden, all with genuine artifacts from the 40s to add some depth. Number 9. Stained Glass Workshop and Museum This site is more than just a museum. You can observe stained glass artisans using centuries-old techniques. The workshop was created in 1902 by the architect Stanislaw Gabriel Zelensky and relocated into the current location that he designed in 1906. This studio was designed to serve as a meeting place for Poland's top glass painters, who were in high demand during the Art Nouveau period. More than 200 windows produced by this workshop adorn buildings around Krakow today, most famously in Wawel and at the Franciscan Church. Guided tours in English are on the hour and will bring you through wonderful exhibitions of stained glass and into the studio where you can see pieces being created. Number 8. Manga you might not have expected to be engrossed in Japanese culture in Krakow, but that's exactly what's on offer at this museum across the river from Wawel, the museum and cultural center where the work of film director Andrzej Wajda, who fell in love with Japanese art after seeing the collection, gathered by art critic Felix Jasienski in the 1940s. More than four decades later, Wajda, on receiving a film prize, opted to donate the money to set up a new museum for the collection. Manga opened in 1994, and Japanese architect Arata Isozaki's airy, oscillating design has dated very well. There are now 7,000 pieces in the collection, counting paintings, woodcuts, ceramics, furniture, and samurai armor. Emperor Akito paid a visit back in 2002. Number 7. Cloth Hall one of the symbols for Krakow, the Cloth Hall, has existed in some form since the 1200s, and the Renaissance monument at the center of the main square today is from the 1500s. A trading hall for 800 years, the Cloth Hall testifies to Krakow's position in the middle of Central Europe's medieval commercial network. Most of the goods sold here came from the east, like silk, spices, wax, and leather. The Cloth Hall is still a market, and if it doesn't quite have the same cachet, it's the first place to come if you're stuck for souvenir ideas or gifts. Number 6. Casimir South of the Old Town is a district that was a separate city for 500 years up to the 19th century. Casimir's was founded by Casimir III the Great, taking his name and granted the status of a royal city. After a fire in Krakow at the end of the 15th century, King Jan I Albrecht moved the entire Jewish population to Kazimierz, which ballooned as it took in Jews expelled from cities throughout Europe. They occupied space within an interior wall, dividing Kazimierz between Jewish and ethnic Poles. And although that wall was pulled down more than 200 years ago, the eastern streets of Kazimierz have a Jewish flavor that's been revived since the late 1980s. A lot of Schindler's List was filmed in this neighborhood which once again has restaurants, synagogues, bookshops, and bars for a small but dynamic Jewish community. Number 5. Wawel Cathedral A monument of real national importance, Wawel Cathedral is the site of the coronation and burial of numerous national heroes, Polish monarchs, and cultural figures. The current building was completed in the 14th century, after the previous two were burnt down or destroyed. And because of its many royal burial chapels, the cathedral's taken on a captivating variety of styles. Number 4. Wawel Castle 
A monument of immeasurable national importance, the UNESCO-listed Wawel Castle completes an ensemble with the cathedral on its lofty perch above the old town. The castle contains architecture ranging from Romanesque to Baroque and served as the seat of the King of Poland from the 13th to the 17th centuries. A fallow period then arrived after the capital was moved to Warsaw and the castle was damaged by the Swedish invasion in the 1650s. But since the 1940s, Wawel Castle's been a national museum, presenting the riches of the Polish monarch through sumptuous interiors, painting by Veronese, Lucas Kranich, the elder and Domenico Ghirlandaio, Gobelin tapestries, and a marvelous treasury and armory. One piece that must not be missed is Skirbiak, the coronation sword for almost every monarch from 1320 to 1764. Number 3. St. Mary's Basilica Built on the foundations of an earlier church, also leveled by the Mongols, this brick Gothic wonder is from the beginning of the 14th century and would be reworked over the next few decades. The St. Mary's trumpet call is played from the top of the taller of the two towers, on the hour, every hour. Within, the stained glass windows and the gold stars on the blue background in the vaults are sublime. But the star of the show is the largest Gothic altarpiece in the world. Completed in 1484, it was carved over seven years by German sculptor Viet Stoss, with lime-wooded sculpted figures up to 2.7 meters high. Number 2. Reinick Glauny, Main Square One of the largest medieval squares in Europe, Krakow's central marketplace has been the commercial, social, and administrative focal point of the city since the middle of the 13th century. This grand plaza measures 200 meters by 200 and was laid out in the years after Krakow was raised by the Mongol invasion, so was also an enduring piece of medieval urban design. A few of the monuments on this list are on or near the square, like the Cloth Hall and St. Mary's Basilica. At the borders of the main square are long rows of townhouses, and although these took on neoclassical facades at the turn of the 20th century, the buildings within are usually far older. Number 1. Stair Miasto, Old Town Krakow's oldest quarter is a planned city established in 1257, immediately after the Mongol invasion destroyed everything. The entire city was surrounded by barriers, which are now a ring of parkland, and the massive royal ensemble on Wawel Hill towered over its southernmost point. A day in the old town will fly by as you drift from churches to atmospheric squares, attractive specialty shops to museums. Going out for dinner or a drink can be a historical adventure, descending into cellars with gothic vaults. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any travel updates.